let's baton this guy and then we'll should have set up my area a little better. Let's put on this guy. And also, if your hand is fatigued and you're worried you're going to lose the knife, um, the forward lanyard hole, you just pop a lanyard through there and then it'll sit in your wrist like that. And so it won't get away from you as you're kind of doing this work. And if I were doing this more, I would have the lanyard on there. And then I would kind of have it snugged up so it kind of sat like this and couldn't get out of my, couldn't like get thrown. Um, so yeah, I am just going to, this is that, uh, this is almost three inches. We'll call it two and a half inches across um, that I cut with that Fujiwara saw just a second ago. Yeah, and I really didn't even, man, that went through there like butter, you guys. I mean, like butter. This is, this is a quarter inch of steel, right? As soon as you get started, that thing started cracking. Like, I probably don't even need the baton. Oh, look at that. I don't even need the baton. Guy went right in there. Okay, let's do it again. Now I'm going to give it a little chop to get it started. No baton needed. Look at that. Well, my the log I'm chopping on is rotting, but I don't even have to baton. Oh, oh my goodness. So I am not the best um, fire curl person, but look at that. You would think because this is such a monster knife, it wouldn't be able to curl like that. Oh, look at that. It doesn't matter if they come off. It's got a 20 degree bevel on the blade and it just makes those curls like I am not a good fire stick maker and that that 20 degree convex grind got a bee near my face just making those things come right off man I went a little too deep on that one but I'll go ahead and get that. There. Look at that. And that is, I, I am not, I am not a good fire stick maker, as you can tell. But I feel confident with this blade that even though I'm not, and see now I'm biting really deep because I'm going faster to try to prove how not good I am at this. But bam! Somebody who is actually good at making fire sticks with this guy. Let me try the, I'm gonna drag the other way. You know, I, I like to drag this way. There's a knot there. And this way. See, all of these. And then if I just wanna do some quick whittling with it, To get some material off. Look at that. And again, I haven't stropped this, I haven't sharpened it. This is how it came out of the box. Now I'll strop it and oil it before I put it away tonight or after I get home. But that's about it. And this is, um, the wood I'm cutting on right now is, let me see what, I can't see the leaves down there. Might be walnut. 
No, no, that's hickory. So the wood I'm cutting on right now is hickory. That's hard wood. And if I wanted to, so I've got some material, saw that off, have like a little peg, something like that. It's nice. It will, it will remove the material and it will also, again, you have to forgive my horrible, I got some knots there, smooth that off a little. See those fine curls? It's good stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna continue to say this is my new favorite knife. This thing is a monster. We've really started our all of our fire, right? So we, we took a piece, we battened it down, or batoned it down, battened it down, tied it down, batoned it down, we got a little bit of tinder, these fine curls everywhere. We got our fire stick. And then the other thing I would say is processing tinder from the back. Remember I said that spine is textured? I want you to look at that. I know you can't see what it's doing on the ground, but hopefully you can see that flying everywhere. Look at that. Peeling that bark right off. And I got stuff like this now all over the place. If we have, um, so we've got Eastern Red Cedar back here, and that's what I would actually process with the back of this knife. I would get, um, I would get some Eastern Red Cedar. I wish I had one close. I don't, but the same thing I would just start scraping the bark just like that and you can see I mean you can't see all of the it's it's shredding off stuff like this stuff like this you can't see all of that but you can see what it's done to the back of this stick it's stripped the bark bare so now if I were doing this in a controlled manner and down in my fire pit, I would have a ton of this stuff. And then I could get my bigger curls in there, right? And then I could do my fire stick if I were any good at doing fire sticks. And so what I usually do, I usually do a couple. I don't do them in the middle. I mean, I don't do them in the end. I do them in the middle. And then I cross them over each other Everybody has their own way, right? So I get a couple like this in the middle. I get my tinder, then I get my shavings that fell off, and I pile that on my tinder, and then I kind of do like an, a cross thing right here, and I'll put another one right here. So all of my curls that are actually on the stick are there. Tinder's underneath, and I throw that spark in there, blow it into life, and there we go. So what else do we need to do here? Um, since we basically built our fire, <laughs> even though there is no fire pit here, there's, um, I haven't kept any of this stuff together. Let's look at the, wow, <laughs> did you see how deep that went in? All right. Can you even see that? Yeah. So the, the ferro rod comes in this little, uh, kydex attachment. This came with it. He sets these up for you. And that just loops on there. Hold it on there. Let's get it off. This. And then, so you can really strike this thing with any part of this spine, but the, the texturing is going to really do a number on your ferro rod. So, I'm looking. He said he ground down a specific spot. This other side actually looks like what he ground down to 90 out here 
but I see a space, I usually use mine like this, and I see a space on this side that I think will be good. So let me get some of this out of the way before I kill myself. And sit back down here, and then I'm just gonna throw some sparks. I'm not trying to win uh, Jerry's ferro rod competition. I'm just throwing some sparks with my new favorite knife. Actually, I might try that side. So, when I have my boys out, you might have seen me in that video teaching uh, my nine-year-old how to strike a ferro rod. When I strike a ferro rod, I generally do like this with the knife. Right? Like that. Um, when I have somebody else around, especially my boys, yeah, you, know, you can see the how the texturing's eating it up. But it, still, man, it's throwing it's throwing some good sparks. I, I think I actually like using that textured side because it makes more material come off. It might eat up your ferro rod, but I mean, what's a ferro rod cost? Seven, eight bucks. There's uh, the 90 he made, I can actually see it now that we're out here, is on this other side. And that works fine too. So I do throw the knife like this. Uh, when my boys are out, I teach them to keep the knife still and pull the ferro rod. So you would be down on your fire, this stays still, and then that's how I teach my boys so that they're not whoosh and then chopping each other up or chopping me. And that's the way I do it when I'm around them. So I would actually ask you guys to try that. If you are if you normally take your knife and throw the sparks with your ferro rod, um, think about knife safety and who's in your blood circle. That's what I call it. I don't, uh, does anybody else call it blood circle? That means who is gonna bleed if you mess up. Right now, there's nobody else in my blood circle. So as long as I'm practicing safe nice I'm not cutting down into the triangle of death that some people call it um, I don't mind throwing the knife or like hacking like this right um, but again if you have if you have kids around or other people or you're not as comfortable with a knife as as other people are hold the knife still and you can do this back edge like this or this other edge right so there's two sides of my spine. I can use like this, or I can use like this. This side has the is the side that's eating it up. So I'm gonna use the, the 90 he made for me over here. Knife stays stable right where you want the spark to go. So like, let's pretend this stick is my fire, right? The knife staying there, or my fire lay. I'm just using this as an example. You can't light this stick on fire. Knife stays still ferro rod moves. I would have my hand like right there at my tender. Man, that throws a lot of sparks. It's nice. All right, so what else do we want to do with this guy? I've stabbed it into this log already. And it goes all the way up the, the end Tonto blade. Um, goes in this way because of the the way the kydex sheath bows out up here. So you put it in from the bottom. And then the good thing about the bungee cord and locking it in is even when you've taken a lot of material off of it and it's gotten smaller, uh, the bungee will hold it in. So when I stab that into this log, oh, that's another good thing. You see that uh, 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 the pommel or whatever you call the end of this, um, that's a beefy thing right there, man. That will break stuff. Okay.